Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company and I am in the garden at our videographer's house in his gorgeous garden and I am going to tear him up. <laughs> I'm gonna talk a little bit about what he's doing wrong, what he needs to do better, and in particular, I wanna talk about cabbages because they can be very difficult. So before I get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can be notified anytime we put a video out. Okay, so he's got this really adorable patch. Now, don't hate me, I, I, I mean all of this with love, please. <laughs> but he's got this great little adorable patch of cabbages here, but they're really struggling. And I wanna talk about why that is. Why are they stunted? They're not doing a whole lot. They've been in the ground for far too long. And what's causing them to grow so slowly and, and be all holy like they are now. So, a few things. One, it's the placement. These were planted underneath this macadamia nut tree and also underneath the jacaranda tree. So we got two trees that are shading them. And now during the fall, that's a fabulous idea because they need that shade. However, now that we are in the winter time, we just had a winter solstice, the sun is very low in the horizon and the days are very short and these plants simply are not getting enough sunlight. So they are, they are very stunted, they're not doing much at all. I, I swear I was here a couple months ago and they were the exact same size. That's a signal that they're not getting enough sunlight. Now there's absolutely nothing he can do about that. I would hate for him to trim any of his macadamia nut tree. All he can do is leave them in the ground until the days get longer and they actually start photosynthesizing more and growing quicker. So let's talk about how that issue relates to another issue. So they're not growing very fast, so they can't defend themselves from insect issues because they're not producing a lot of new foliage. You can see here, this guy is getting devoured and all of these little holes are a telltale sign of leaf-eating caterpillars. And let's see if we can find one. Oh, yep, look right there. There's a little baby. Wow, look at that beautiful neon green color. So these are leaf-eating caterpillars. They can be of you know, varying kinds, but it's very uh, obvious that the damage is coming from those because of the holes that you see, and you see them sporadically. You can lift up the leaf and you can see, you can find them. If you come out at night, it's easier to find them than during the day. Now, because the plant's not growing very quickly, it can't outcompete all of this damage and it can be enough damage that it can be of detriment to the plant. When the plant is really big, a couple of little holes don't matter, but he needs to do something to take care of this now so that they can continue to grow and he can harvest them in the spring. He has a few different options. One, you can spray BT, which is called bacterial thurogenesis. That's what that is. It is a naturally occurring bacteria in the ground that they have extracted and basically bottled. It's an organic product and it targets specifically leaf eating caterpillars. Now in our garden and on our farm, we try to use as little chemicals as possible we're certified organic and if we can use nothing but water and sunshine and love that's what we're going to try to use but sometimes you need a little extra help this is a situation where he might need to spray now bt targets specifically leaf eating caterpillars which means that it is uh, it has less environmental effect on other insects however let's think about other leaf eating caterpillars that are in the garden that we really love like monarch butterfly caterpillars swallowtail uh, caterpillars. Those will all grow up to be butterflies that we love seeing in our garden. So you want to follow the directions really well, read them, understand how to use the product and apply it specifically how you need. On the back of the bottle it will give you all of that information. But if I was him, I would spray this so that it can bounce back and then I would cover this whole area with row cover. Why? Because I want to keep any more butterflies or moss from landing on the plant, depositing their eggs, and then those eggs turning into leaf eating caterpillars and making the problem worse. So I can spray once, cover, and then let them do their thing and continue to grow. The other thing that I would do, not knowing what his soil is like um, fertility wise, I would suggest first that you, um, you know, have the soil tested so that you know, but if you think that it's lacking in nutrients, I would put down a uh, organic granular fertilizer. Cabbages, cauliflowers, and broccolis are very heavy feeders. 
They need a lot of organic matter in the soil and nutrients to grow the big plant that will give you the big head. If your soil is lacking in nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, or any of the micro or macronutrients, the plant will struggle. And so by feeding it regularly, you can guarantee that the plant can grow really big and really healthy and very happy. Now, just because this patch has been sitting stagnant for months on end, doesn't mean that it's not completely edible. He can absolutely harvest these guys. You can see here, this guy is totally harvestable, but the flavor may be a little lacking because it's still very immature. So he has the choice to harvest the heads if he wants, or he can wait it out fertilize, spray, cover, let the spring, the longer days in the spring, hit the plants and watch them totally take off and become bigger, happier plants. In this particular situation, I would ask myself, do I need this area for something else? If I was really excited to say plant garlic and I needed the space and I wanted to put garlic in, then I would go ahead and harvest them, plant the garlic, so that I have another crop going and just enjoy these. These are perfectly good for making um, sauerkraut, um, making stir fries, anything like that. But if he doesn't need the space, who cares? Leave them, let them grow, let them do their thing and enjoy bigger, more flavorful heads in the springtime after the plants have been allowed to grow for a little bit longer. So one of the ways that you can ask yourself what's going on with the plants, when you're thinking about sunlight, look at the plants and look and see how they're different in the particular area and then look and see which ones are getting more shade and more sun. So if you see here, the plants that are on this side, which are, are less shaded by the jacaranda tree and the macadamia nut tree are much bigger than on this side. I mean, you'll see this guy is eensy teensy tiny because he's almost completely shaded by this macadamia nut branch that is hanging down. So Take time in your garden and when you're not sure why something is happening, particularly when you're looking in a garden bed and you want to know why plants on one side are doing better than the other, really assess the area. Look for shade from neighboring trees, neighboring buildings, and remember that that shade changes throughout the year as the sun changes its location. It's, it's kind of a skill you have to develop, but over time you'll be able to look at a bed and really understand why one side might be doing better than the other.